As we return here to Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, we wanted to hear from the horse's mouth about how the new ITF World Tour is affecting the players who live it, not the stars of the sport, but the rank and file guys who are trying to make a living and move up the ladder. Jared Hiltzik is 24 years old from Illinois. He's ranked 383 in the world this week, and he's been one of the vocal critics of the new ITF Tour. Jared, thanks for joining us on the show. All right, so without getting into the weeds on all of the changes that the ITF World Tour have instituted, the, the kind of the nuts and bolts of it is, in the old system, there were points available, ATP points, at Futures, at Challengers, at every event to help you build your ranking to get into the, the show. Yep. Now, ATP points have been eliminated from some of the lower level Futures events, and uh, it's very difficult to, to get spots. How is a guy like you, who's sort of between 300 and 500 in the world, meant to to, to move up if, if the opportunities are less? And that, that's the million dollar question right now. That's what guys in my position, we just don't really know. Um, last year, you go and play Futures, and I played Houston and won that Futures. I got 27 points. And then as soon as 2019 starts, that gets deducted to three. So it's kind of that position where now in order for me to kind of make it to the next level, I'd have to win three to four futures to kind of make it up 10 ATP spots. Does this system run the risk of running guys like you out of the sport? I think 100 percent. It, it does. Yeah. And I guess for fans that are watching who probably don't care as much about you, they might say, so what? I don't, I don't know who Jared Hiltzik is, but, but isn't the larger point that the sport doesn't exist without the lower levels, without talent coming up, without a system to help grow future stars? And if that goes away, the, the quality of the sport diminishes. Exactly. No, you have to kind of the name of how tennis works is you make your way up through these different systems. I was doing some um, stat crunching the other day, and I was looking at Pablo Carina Busta. In 2013, he started the year off winning seven futures in a row, mm -hmm. and he made his way up into the next level, into the next level. Now, if you win seven futures in a row, the level he was playing, the 15Ks, you get zero ATP points. It's amazing. One of the other things the ITF claims that this new system does is that they say it reduces the opportunities for corruption in the sport because, A, it eliminates some players and matches from the tour uh, where guys were making very little money at all, uh, and that obviously reduces the opportunity for, for match fixing. Is that a valid claim? Is that going to help in that regard? I mean, look, sports betting is it's always here. It's never going to end, and it's something that has just been really difficult for players because we get all this hate mail after, ma after matches like that you threw this match, and it's it's kind of... It's shocking because so many people in death threats and everything gets thrown at you. And I'm just trying to win a tennis match. Like, I love to compete. So what should happen? If the players had their wish, what changes would be made? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think we can agree that when the changes came out beginning of last year, for them to say that, yeah, we want 300 to 350 players to make a living playing pro tennis, I think that is a phenomenal, it's great. It's great. I mean, that's all that we can ask for in our position. And unfortunately, right now, there are players who are of that level that are not able to make their way up, or it's become more difficult for them to do so. And that's probably the hardest part right now. All right, thanks so much, Brett. Uh, it, it's a story that has been discussed in, in, in a lot of tennis circles this year. Tracy, what's, what's your opinion about the new ITF rules? I'm not going to pretend I'm completely educated on this. I've asked so many people to explain it to me, and I still can't figure it out. And a lot of people can't explain it. I'm just hoping that there's some middle ground somehow that the ITF could be happy and that the players could be happy as well. Because i got to tell you, I, I do spend some time at these lower-level tournaments, and I hear about some of these players that are honestly thinking about stopping because they just don't see a pathway. They don't see enough opportunities to even try to get on the roller coaster of the Pro Tour. They should be have enough opportunities to at least play events. If they don't make it, that's up to them. But I'd like to see the opportunity still there. Yeah, Tracy hits on two key words, pathway and opportunity. Um, it's one thing to make changes. It's another thing to make sure that there are pathways and opportunities for the players to get there. I understand some of the streamlining themes behind what the ITF has tried to do. Look. I've been around for a long time, and uh, this is the first time in a very long time where we've seen a bureaucratic organization like the ITF make some very big changes uh, with Davis Cup and with this as well. So I like the, I like the idea that change is possibility. 
um, is there, but we just have to be careful. We also have to make sure we get a lot of information in before uh, we make some decisions. Right now, the verdict's still out. I'm a little bit skeptical. All right. We'll see how it all plays out in the end. Much more still to come here on Tennis Channel Live. Our hot shot of the day from Roger Federer. Don't go anywhere.